What schools of thought perhaps have you borrowed from or incorporated into your your mindset? Yeah. So, you know, something that I have become quite interested in is phenomenology. And I set up a phenomenology reading group here um, that reads sort of Jaspers and Heidegger and um, some more sort of classic mm -hmm. phenomenologists. What is phenomenology for people who don't know? That's a very good question. It's quite hard to define. Phenomenology is a lot of things, but it is the... I think for the purposes of psychiatry, it's the exploration of abnormal subjectivity, which is kind of what we do, actually. And I think that one of the things that attracted me to it is the loss of the subjective. How do you make sense of somebody's subjective experience, which is what they're really asking you to deal with, um, when the tools that you have feel much more objective, where you might want to do a rating scale, for example, and ask about sort of sleep or appetite, um, or think about response to medication in a kind of sort of quantitative way. Whereas what's most interesting about psychiatry actually is when the patient brings you a very abnormal subjective experience, whether that's a delusional state or whether that's the idea of a depression being experienced as a complete foreshortening of possible future lives that they can have, that their experience of time has actually just profoundly changed. Um, that how do you incorporate that into the kind of psychiatric models that we have? And I think that phenomenology would teach something about just exploring that abnormal subjective state, being really interested in it. And that doesn't mean that other things get left behind, but I think something that they've struggled with is, is how you bring those things together. And I think that we've perhaps lost a little bit of that tradition in modern psychiatric training, part of that being because we have very much started to align ourselves with a neuroscientific, quite medical model, or even a sort of maybe biopsychosocial model, but one that perhaps finds it hard to integrate all of those things together in a meaningful way. Whereas what the patient is bringing you is an incredibly disturbing <laughs> subjective experience that they've had. Do you think that they are uh, irreconcilable, that they are incompatible? The, the for example, biopsychosocial model and a more phenomenological way of looking at things? No, I, I just think they can become very simplified. So in the same way that phenomenology can quite easily be reduced to just psychopathology, just doing a good mental state mm -hmm. so that you document the kind of things that people are delusional about or or that they have a delusion, that that sometimes doesn't promote a kind of just very open exploration of what that is, what it means, how it develops, um, and different, different ways in which we might understand that. Um, the same with the biopsychosocial model. You know, it, it has to be integrated. I mean, it's very hard to do, but it has to be brought together and integrated rather than, well, there are these factors and there are these factors and there are these factors. That can be helpful, but I'm not sure it moves us along a lot. I mean, what it does do, what people like about it, is that it, it gives some credence to other factors other than just the biological. But I don't know any psychiatrist that doesn't think that. I mean, you, you don't have to meet very many patients to know that stressful yeah. life events and poverty... Um, play a role in the kind of difficulties that we see before us. But it's the integration that I think people might struggle with. Yeah, and I guess that's what a philosophical model is trying to do, even if it struggles to do it. That's that's what it, that's what it's grappling with. Something that's going to you know pull pull everything together. And the other thing about adopting a curious mindset is that it does really serve to improve the relationship you have with the patient, I think, because 
I think a patient can probably tell the difference between a clinician who's quite curious Mm -hmm. and quite willing to non-judgmentally, like you said before, bear witness to whatever experiences they have. And then that has a therapeutic benefit all of its own versus a stance of let me get the minimum information I need to get in order to do my job to the minimum sort of satisfactory requirement. Yeah. I think people can really tell the difference between one position and the other position. Yeah, and I think one has, there's there's a possibility of the encounter itself being therapeutic um, when one takes a more curious stance and allows the patient to bring whatever it is that's on their mind or, you know, it can be very interesting what people will tell you if you just give them the space to explore it. Again, thinking more about different schools of thought, one thing that's very, very controversial nowadays and what I think has become quite fragmented is the opinion on things like medication. And I think that's partly because of the nature, the channels through which people get information, I think is very polemic um, and fragmented. So you get a 30 second soundbite on the news one day on why medication is terrible and a terrible idea. And then maybe a 500 word article a few days later on how actually it's the cause, it's the solution for all our problems. Mm -hmm. How do you think about something, you know, complex and controversial, like, for example, the use of psychiatric medication? It's a very, um, it's a very complicated topic. And there's certainly, you know, one can have all sorts of thoughts about medication and its usefulness or not. But I guess the question might be, well, how much do I prescribe myself? Um... You know, and I, I do, you know, obviously I, I do work with quite a lot of people who are really very ill, but I, I do prescribe quite a lot of medication. Um, I'm also very sympathetic to the arguments that put very crudely that, you know, big pharma have infiltrated the way that we think about mental illness particularly this maybe difference between depression and sadness or what's ordinary anxiety um, in in such a way that we I'm sure over we I, I, I think we probably massively over prescribe as a as 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 a as a population and it certainly appears to be the case that despite what SSRI prescriptions I don't know how many hundreds of thousands millions more there are in western europe and north america over what the past 25 years i mean we can definitely say the population is no happier or less Mm. anxious Mm -hmm. than it than it was before Mm. um do you think it's just as much as the case in the uk as the us because the us it's obviously private healthcare is much more the norm and there's also drug advertising on television which is quite disturbing. I don't know if you've ever seen adverts where they say, ask your doctor about... Yes. I mean, I think the US is definitely worse than ours. Um, but, you know, I think that we, you know, I think we still have a sizable number of people who've never seen a psychiatrist, wouldn't need to see a psychiatrist, you know, in, in primary care on antidepressants. It's definitely the case that lots of people will say antidepressants really made a difference for them. Um, and, you know, th- who, that's important. That's, that, that's an important thing to take account of. Um, but I, I suspect, you know, my, my, my own personal feeling is that they're overprescribed. Do you think then that if if medication is overprescribed, then that must mean that alternative ways of dealing with one's mental health are underemphasized on some level. Do you, do you think that's the case? I think that probably is the case, but I think that's a very very it's very complicated. Yeah, you know it's 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 it, it's this is this is a complex social phenomenon about how we experience ourselves, um, how we tolerate our own distress how we think about suffering and what 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 place it has um 
where we see if there's any purpose in being anxious at all or is it always seen as something bad that has to be got rid of and treated um and you you can't pick up a newspaper without there being talk about a mental health crisis um and it does seem we do have a mental health crisis actually amongst our university students and our children and that seems to be for very that seems to me to be related to very complex social phenomenon and not related to underprescribing of you know psychiatric drugs um but which leads to the prescribing of psychiatric drugs which may be you know which 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 which, which may be something helpful that we have to offer but nonetheless doesn't address the cause the underlying cause of it